I'm a beast at parallel parking. I'll just let you know I live in Philadelphia. My name is Patrice Banks, and I'm going to start by sharing a personal story. So six years ago, I was an engineer working for DuPont, and it was one of those warm summer days, kind of like today, where you can't wait to get outside to enjoy the weather. I was really unfocused at work, thinking about what I'm going to do on my lunch break. So I logged on to Facebook, was browsing around to pass the time, and I just posted this status. My car needs an oil change, but I'm going to get a mani-pedi instead. Now, I like to be silly on social media, and I thought this manicure-pedicure status was going to get some attention and probably some pretty funny comments. I didn't actually see the comments until I got back from the nail salon later that afternoon, where the guys were saying, this is why women shouldn't drive, and you're going to be stuck on the side of the road with a blown engine. Of course, my ladies came to the rescue by saying, at least she'll look cute on the side of the road while she's waiting for a guy to help her or thumbing it for a ride. My 28-year-old self thought that this was funny. My 30-year-old self thought this was genius. At 30, I called myself an auto airhead because I was. I struggled to lift the hood of my car. I was turn the key and go. And because of this, I did minimum service on my car I waited until the last minute to do repairs. I would panic anytime something would go wrong. I felt taken advantage of by mechanics. And I would rather get my nails done than protect a $25,000 asset. And it's no secret that this is the state of many women in their cars today, auto airheads, just like me. But it reflects on how we feel about the automotive industry. Up to 77% of women feel misunderstood by automakers and taken advantage of by mechanics. And we are. We're guarded with our car pieing and repair decisions, right? We think, is this real? Do I really need this? Does it cost this much money? Or am I being taken advantage of? And we think, do I have a husband or a brother or a father to help me? So I'm not taken advantage of. But listen, men don't know a lot of this stuff either. The other day, I was coming out of the gym, and I saw two guys trying to jumpstart a car, and they were doing it wrong. I so badly wanted to go up to them and say, hey, guys, can I help you? But I understand how fragile the male ego is, so I quietly passed them by. But the realization for women in their cars today is this. We're overwhelmed with simple maintenance tasks. We feel taken advantage of by mechanics and we often make poor buying decisions with our cars. I started searching for a female mechanic to help me and to share, and surprisingly, my search came up empty. I don't need statistics to tell me what I already knew. I needed an education, and so do millions of women out there. I couldn't find a female mechanic, so I became one. And I went back to school for automotive technology and started creating a vision for a company that educates and empowers women through their cars. And who better to teach you than an auto airhead turned auto tech? And guess what, ladies? We are the number one customer in the automotive industry. Women buy more than half of all new cars in the United States, and we influence up to 80% of car purchases. Also, did you know that 67% of auto service and maintenance work is requested by women. So, we buy more cars than men. We take our cars in for repairs more than men. And for the first time in history, a study shows that women hold more driver's licenses than men across all age groups. So that means there are more women drivers than men. Does that scare you guys? More women drivers on the road? Well, it's here. Women spend $200 billion a year on buying and repairing their cars. So why do we have this huge disconnect between women and the automotive industry? I believe it's because there are virtually no women that work in this industry. Less than 2% of mechanics or technicians are women, and less than 7% of auto dealership service advisors, salespeople, and managers combined are women even though we prefer a female mechanic or a female car salesman. So my question is this, why do we have so many women drivers and so few female mechanics and car saleswomen? Well, in my three-year journey so far in the automotive industry, 
I have found that almost every single woman will face discrimination because of her sex. Big surprise, right? But it's blatant. And I want to give you an example of a recent experience of mine. I was hired to go to a technical high school to speak to an automotive class about what it means to be a woman in the automotive industry. The class was all boys, about 40 students, and they didn't believe that I was a mechanic. They challenged me with questions to test my car knowledge. They asked to see my hands. They told me I was a distraction. Imagine a 15-year-old girl who enjoys cars, loves cars, wants to work on them, enter into this field, Five years from now, she's going to be looking for a job from one of these guys. Needless to say, they got an earful from me that day. But my point is, there's very little support for women in the automotive industry for career growth and development, especially in car buying and repair. Women get discouraged and frustrated. We're often the first ones to be laid off, or we drop out and go into an entirely different profession. And because of that, the industry does not reflect its number one customer. It is heavily dominated by men who may or may not be trying to understand the emotional need that drives a woman to buy a car or approve a repair service. The bottom line is this. Women feel mistreated and misunderstood by this industry because there are so few women who work in it. And it is important that women are included in the entire automotive process from concept design and manufacturing to sales and repair. Women should be empowered to enter this industry and given tools and support for career growth and development. So two years after I could not find a female mechanic, I created Girls Auto Clinic. And Girls Auto Clinic offers automotive buying and repair services based on trust, education, inclusion, and empowerment. It is my mission to disrupt the automotive industry by catering to my number one customer, women. And I want to make history with Girls Auto Clinic, not just by creating a community of car savvy women, but by creating opportunities for women to sit at the table in this industry across all levels, whether they want to be technicians, salespeople, managers, engineers, or CEOs like Mary Barra of GM. So now, today, at 34, I want to reach every woman driver in the United States. Each woman who operates a car should have a good education of how her car works and how to maintain it, a mechanic that she trusts, and she should feel confident about her car buying choices. I want women to own their cars, and owning it means knowing it. Girls Auto Clinic empowers women to know their cars, no longer fear the mechanic, or panic when something goes wrong. I educate women by hosting free car care workshops where you'll learn how to take care of your car, how to talk to a mechanic, and what to do in an emergency. The workshops are designed to be interactive and fun, and women leave feeling confident to handle any issues with their car that may arise. If you can't attend a workshop, or for car tips on the go, I've also written a book for women called the Girls Auto Clinic Glove Box Guide. It fits in your glove box and you'll reference it for things like dashboard lights. What do they mean? Should I panic? Can I ignore it? Or how often am I supposed to change my oil? It's no longer 3,000 miles or every three months. And my personal favorite, do I really need that air filter the mechanic tells me I need every time I go in for an oil change? The Glove Box Guide includes tires, belts, fluids, and a lot of great information. There's pictures, tips. It's going to help you save money and stay safe on the road. And then I also blog car tips on my website that women get a kick out of because they're relatable. It's everyday language and no over your head technical talk. So for example, one title is Does Your Car Have Boogies? Where we talk about air filters. Another, if you think of your engine, and this is a, this is a fan favorite, think of your engine like a vagina. Can anyone tell me the main purpose of engine oil? Spit, spit it out, anyone know? Lubricate, yes. So, you don't need to understand the four-stroke engine, but you do need to know that your engine needs oil. Your engine has fast-moving parts rubbing up and down, working hard to make your car go. What happens when you have fast-moving parts rubbing up and down with no lubrication? 
You ever notice when you need an oil change, your car runs a little rough, and then as soon as you get one, it's running a lot smoother, almost singing or purring? The single most important thing that you can do for your car is to get your oil changed when it's due. No low lube, no dirty lube. I also know that women feel misunderstood, uh, mistreated, disrespected when they're buying cars. So I assist and consult women with new and used car buying. I want us all to feel good and make more confident decisions when it comes to buying a car. So we know we have a safe, reliable car for a fair price. And the result of this education is that women are empowered to learn more and they feel good about their cars. So up next, I will be opening the first Girls Auto Clinic full auto service repair shop in Philadelphia. Girls Auto Clinic Repair will cater to women. We will be hiring female mechanics, technicians, and service advisors. There will be a beautiful, clean, and welcoming lounge tailored to women. But the best part about Girls Auto Clinic Repair, there will be a nail salon there, so you can get your nails done while you're waiting for your car. <laughs> Thank you. Girls Auto Clinic is a destination place where women can come feel confident about themselves, their cars, and their buying choices. They trust their auto service shop, but more importantly, they trust themselves to make the right decision when it comes to their cars. I believe in Girls Auto Clinic. Never has there been a greater time to be a woman in America than right now. We are becoming empowered to take charge of things that we once feared and avoided. And I know that we can rise to the occasion when taking over our cars and the automotive industry. And I'm ready for it. Are you ready, Chicanix? Let's do it. Thank you. And I hope to see you all at my grand opening. Thank you.